Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fees? 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 Give a big shout out to the real Shadella, Philip Bishop. Troy Smith Jr., Morgan, Justin Bamsey, Sneaker Heat, Rashad Belly, Rashad Bell, my bad, Keefe1718, Alejandro Garcia, and Boss Boy Thump. Appreciate y'all for being part of this membership. Now check me out, right? I don't really like the microphone setup that I had with the mic hooked up, so I just got rid of all that. I like this setup that I had before I even got that. I don't know, it's just, this just seems, I just like this a little better, so I think I'm going to get rid of the mic, and I'm going to just do it the way I've been doing. There was a time that I was falsely accused of suitcasing. Now, I know people, you feel me, y'all want to have y'all little damn jokes, but that ain't what happened. I'm going to tell you what really happened. Now, keep in mind, I told y'all that I was the administration orderly before, so, you know, I used to get away with a lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff because the heat was never really on me even like I could have everything going on the heat was not on me because you know what I'm saying I'm the last one that they like yeah he got something going on the heat not on me so I was able to do what I do and kind of slip through a lot of cracks and stuff it wasn't until the heat started getting on me where things was getting fishy so the first time I went to the hole at Valdosta State Prison I had been there I had been at that prison for years before going to the hole. The first time I went to the hole, it was for, um, I think it was about that girl. Nah, it was something before that. Oh, okay. The first time I went to the hole, it was a cadet. And you know, a cadet is the person that is like a new officer. They're, they're coming to get their training, but they brand new here. Like this they they don't they're not in regular officer uniform yet. They're still learning until they pass some more tests, then they could become a real officer. So there was a cadet that called the captain and told the captain that I pulled out fifteen hundred dollars cash money and tried to give it to him to bring me some tobacco. So, you know, they came and locked me down. I went to the hole for that. And I was trying to tell the captain and stuff, like, man, hell no, nah, I ain't say that. Then I switched it up and was like, man, I was just playing with that, man. Y'all know I was just playing. But that's what originally started having eyes on me. Like, oh, Bill might got something going on. The whole time, the staff members, they never knew. So that, that kind of messed me up. So then it's like every little time, like, I'm in the hole, they start randomly kicking in my door. They start randomly coming up to the door talking about, huh, piss test, piss test, piss test. Or just randomly, like, I might just be in there chilling. That thing, you know, the door might swing over. They might be like, get up, put your hand on the wall. Like, searching me and stuff. I got out the hole. Man, ended up going right back by the play I tried to bust. I guess one of them guys I was trying to bust the move with told him, which doesn't surprise me because that's what people do nowadays. So it is what it is. Me and my roommate had an issue in the hole because he was tripping. He told me he didn't do the cream at first. A lot of people have been asking me, what is the cream? The cream is methamphetamines. It's a, a very strong narcotic that I think nobody need to be taking because it makes you hallucinate. It makes you hear things. It makes you see things. Now, I don't per I'm not speaking from a personal experience. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the feeling of it, but I've been around so many people that do it and I see how it causes them to behave. So that's how I know what it does. And him in there, so he go to tweaking. So I got to go and get him up out of there because I'm like, hey, it's finna be an issue. So I just had to cause a big scene. We both ended up getting pulled out the room. I probably tell y'all a separate story on that because it's a long story. I don't feel like going all the way into it. They end up taking him to strip sale. Now the strip sale is you can go for many different reasons, but the main reason is if you say you're suicidal. Sometimes you can go if you say you're homicidal, but most of the time they'll put you on strip sale where they strip you butt naked and take everything away from you if you say you're suicidal. So he was trying to act crazy 
And then I had to act crazy with his ass. And then he thought he was crazy for real. And I'm talking about he finna kill himself. So that's when they took him and put him on a strip set. So I had finessed my way out the room. So now I'm in the cage. Okay, so in the hole. For those of you who got family or friends that you ever sent messages to on this system called JPay, Just a kiosk machine with a table. But in the hole, it's that same exact setup, but it's a cage around it. And it's locked. Only one person can fit in there at a time. So whenever there's an issue and they got to pull somebody out the room, they'll put you in the cage. So they put me in the cage. First, they put my roommate in the shower. They put me in the cage. Then they ended up taking him out to strip cell. So I'm in the cage just chilling for a minute, talking to the orderlies. I had already gave one of the orderlies my phone, told him to hold it down because I thought I was going to have to beat butt ass. I'm talking to him like, if they send me back in the room, just bring me my phone. I'm talking to him like that. So he like, all right, cool. So oh, I'm in the room by myself for a few days, so I'm straight. So they come to my room one day talking about, pack up, you going to the other side. So at this point, you got different sides of the hole. Like each dorm got two dorms and each building got two dorms. So I think the hole was, uh, I don't even really remember. I'm going to say, hold on, that was F. I think the hole was E building. So I was in E2, that's the dorm to the right, and then they got E1 to the left. So they came to my door one day. They was like, hey, pack it up. You going on the other side. I'm like, why would I be going on the other side? And I didn't want to go because this E2 is way more laid back. Like the people, it seemed like the people that they put in the hole over here. Now, you know, they be screaming and beating on the door and making noise. But on the other side, man, that's where everybody be down. Flooding that, acting stupid that. I ain't want to go over there. So I'm like, man, hell no. Nah. I'm over here. I'm straight. Why do I got to go over there? So they said they're separating the people who's. Medium security and close security. Medium, you know, medium, not that bad. Close is like the people who are supposed to be real bad. So I was close security at the time. So they said the dorm I'm in is only going to be medium security people. And the one side is going to be close security people. But what don't make sense to me, we in the damn hole. It ain't like we out walking around freely. What difference does it make? It doesn't make a difference. So I'm arguing with the lady going back and forth. Then I just was like, all right, whatever, man. So I got up. Got my stuff packed up. I really thought that was a trick. I really thought they was trying to, you know what I'm saying, finesse me. So I told her, all right, give me about five, ten minutes. Let me get myself together. So they walk off, and they go telling somebody else to pack up. So I go calling one of the orderlies, my home, but So he come over there. I'm like, hey, folks, man, hold my phone, bro. He like, nah, y'all ain't doing nothing but moving over there. I'm like, bro, I don't trust it. I don't trust it, bro. Just hold my phone. Keep in mind, every time you give an orderly your phone, to hold or put up, they charge you $100. Because it's a chance they're taking too. If they get caught with it, the police don't give a damn whose it was. They got caught with it. So they're going to lose their job. Then they're going to be in the hole. You know what I'm saying? So they don't be wanting to do that. So every time they hold your phone, they charge you $100. So this is going to be the second $100 i am going to have to get this man back to back. So I give him my phone, he take it, he go hide it and wherever he go hide it at. Then I pack up my stuff and I knew damn well I was right. Cause when I got on the other side, I was getting ready to walk to my room. The unit manager, his little short fat ass gonna say, hey, no, take Bill, take Bill in the shower. Take Bill in the shower. So the lady was like, huh? He was like, take Bill in the shower. Now I already knew what that was. When they take you in the shower, you about to get strip searched. But that's only if like you're already outside the room because there's strip search in your room but since i was out the room not in the room yet he like take me in the shower she take me over here to the shower she talking about be yeah i know your ass bet not had nothing on you i said nah i ain't got nothing on me she said you bet not so i just tried i just felt like mess with it i said hey nah for real i got that phone and this weed on me you gonna hold it for me real quick she said hell no nah, bill you got me up bill don't try hey hey she went to call me you and the manager talk about Bill just asked me to hold a phone and some weed. Come running down the damn step. I'm like, man, why is you? I was just playing with you. She's like, no, don't mother play with me like that, mother. So he get down there. So I, I just felt like messing with that. So he got down there. I was like, man, she lying like a mother. I ain't told her no shit like that. So he like, no, you lying. You lying. So she was like, yeah. Yeah, he just asked me that. He just asked me that, you the manager. So the man come in there and search me. I ain't got nothing on me. So he like. 
You causing heat on yourself. Why would you ask her that? I'm like, man, you was finna do this anyway, bro. It don't make no damn difference. I just wanted to see y'all get nice and worked up. <laughs> so they take me to the room. So I got a new roommate, right? So I go in there. I'm like, what's up, bro? What you in? So he was like, oh, no, I ain't nothing. I'm like, you ain't affiliated with nothing? He was like, no. Nah. I'm like, all right, I go to get my stuff together. So I'm like, we, I ain't never seen him there before. Keep in mind, I've been here for years. I'm like, bro, where you, uh, where you came from? So he was like, oh, I was at the Annex. Now, the Annex is, I was actually at the Annex for three weeks. I'm going to tell y'all that story another day. But the Annex is a part of the prison. Now, I can't speak for the medium. I'm only speaking for the level five. The level five is bad. I'm telling you, it's bad. Like, doing time there is bad. So the Annex is when your security get reduced from close to medium or minimum, they send you to the Annex. That's you got to get in a van and drive down the street. It's still this prison, but it's just down the street. And it's a much safer, allegedly, and better area. Like, you don't got people just trying to kill each other all day in the annex. It's like laid back. While I'm getting my bed right, I'm just trying to fill him out. He's saying he's just quiet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, you do the cream? So he's like, huh? Huh? I'm like, man. I say, you do the cream? He said, no, nah, hell no. Nah, I don't with the cream. I said, have you ever did the cream? He talking about, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I used to do the cream, but I don't with it no more. That's bad, bro. That had me tripping. And it's like, damn, bro. I went through a situation with somebody before where I could have lost my life because he was geeked up on the cream. And it's just like, damn, I don't want to be in the room with nobody that's on the cream. But I know, like, you know, sometimes you're placed in a situation, bro, where it's like you can't really, once the police start feeling like you got too much going on, they not going to believe you with certain endeavors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't call the unit manager over there and be like, hey, bro, this ain't going to work with me and my roommate, bro. Move me to another room. He going to find comedy out. Why? Why not, Bill? What's going on? You ain't you ain't going to snitch and tell me? Oh, well, you don't want to move then. That's how they try me because they feel like I manipulated them by, you know, working in the position I was working in and then come find out I was having all kind of stuff going on. So I knew that was pointless. So I actually talked to people at the annex still. We had something going on together. So when bro brought me my phone a couple hours later after the unit manager left, first thing I do is I text one of my guys at the annex. And I'm like, hey, you know a dude named such and such, such and such? So I asked them about the dude I'm in the room with. So they say, yeah, hell yeah. He was just down here. So I'm like, black ass dude. So they're like, yeah. I said, it kind of look like Wesley Snipes a little bit. They said, yeah. I said, he got a little nappy hair. They said, yeah. I said, what's up with him? They said, man, he's a wig artist. Now there's a difference. For a person that wigs out, right? Like, if I do the cream right now, and then I go to trip, I'm like, what? What y'all saying to me? Who looking at me? I just go to trip and thanking people trying to do something to me. I am considered wigging. But if this is not something that I do 24-7, then they just say, yeah, he a wig every now and then. But when you do it 24-7, you are considered a wig artist. So he's, they, they say, yeah, he a wig artist. So I text him back. I'm like, no. So he like, hell yeah, bro. He be jumping up middle of the night, picking up broomsticks, talking about I'm ready to die. Y'all ain't gonna kill me in my sleep. I'm like, oh hell no. Nah. He that nope, nope, nope. That ain't gonna work. That's not gonna work. So I'm like, all right. I asked him, do he do the cream? He told me he don't. So he was like, uh, nah, he do it. He lying. I'm telling you, bro, he lying. He do it. So I'm like, all right, say let. I'm just talking to him. He still seemed cool and stuff like that. So I eventually let him use the phone. He get some money from his folk. He like, man, hey, I just got a 50. I need to buy something. I'm like, what you finna buy? You know what I'm saying? There ain't no cream coming through this flap. I promise you that. So he like, nah, I'm going to get me some Chris Brown CDs, some Al Green or something. But I had already had some Chris Brown CDs on the way. That was already mine. It's just I couldn't get it when I was in the hole because the people in the dorm was acting like they were scared to pass it to the orderly. But now dude was able to bring it to me. So he brought it to me. You know what I'm saying? We buzzed down. I gave him some for the little money he had got. You know, we was in there smoking good, so... I'm in the room with him probably about four days, man. The unit manager come kick the door. I almost went out bad because the way I had to put the phone up, I did. it was another piece I needed to secure it. And I almost couldn't find it. He was at the door talking about some cuff up, cuff up. So I told my roommate, I'm like, man, go to the door and just talk to him. Say anything, argue with him. I don't give a damn what you do. 
So he trying to get us to cover, so I was able to hurry up and put the phone up. So then he came in there, searched us, searched the whole room. He didn't find the phone, but he found my charger. Man, I was sick. So once my phone eventually go dead, I've been trying to buy a charger from people the whole time, bro. People on the compound that I know got chargers for sale, and they telling me they ain't got none. But I, I knew what it was, bro. It's hate. When you hating on somebody, I had stuff going on. Them dudes was hating on me. They wanted me out the way. They're not going to do nothing to help me, to assist me in no type of way. So a lot of people was lying, talking about they ain't got none. And then the dude that was in the hole with me that had a charger, he acting like, oh, I'm going to charge you $50 every time. Like, come on, bro. I need to charge twice a day. I'm not finna pay you a damn $100 a day. So I said, I need to pull a stunt. Now, it was a dude that worked somewhere near the front that had all that stuff for sale. And he didn't, he didn't give a damn. He didn't discriminate, but I didn't have his number. But I know for a fact that man would have gave me a charger. So my whole goal was I need to get up here to go see bro and get a charger. That's what I need to do. But now I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to get from here to up front? Only way I can do that is if I pull a crazy stunt like I'm trying to kill myself or something. But then they're going to put me on strip sale at least for 24 hours at the minimum. But then... You know, I trust the orderlies to take my phone for a few minutes or an hour or two and put it up. I could still see them every 10 seconds. But for them to have my phone for a day, possibly days, I don't trust them like that. So I'm like, I got to take it with me. So I'm like, man, I got to try to figure out a way to get this phone charged, figure out a way. So I'm saying, thank you, thank you. I said, I know what I'm about to do, man. Know what I'm about to do. Now, I tell my roommate, I tell my roommate, I'm like, listen. I'm about to pull this stunt, bro. I'm going to be back. I'm about to go get a charger, and I'm going to be back. But I ain't know him like that neither to be leaving my phone with him. So I'm like, I got to take it with me. But when you leave out this room, you're going to get searched. So how the hell can I take it with me without getting caught with it? So I tell my roommate, I'm like, look, I get the string ready. I tie a string from the light, and I got it hanging down. I'm like, listen, bro, when I tie this string, you feel me? You got to start beating on the door, acting like I'm in here trying to hang. So he was like, all right, cool, all right, cool. Now here's the difference. <laughs> there is a difference from cheeking and suitcasing, right? Cheeking is just like this. This is cheeking, right? I just need to hold this dollar somewhere so it won't fall. You see what I'm saying? So I just do this. I'm just holding the dollar. That's what I did. Suitcasing is you take this dollar and you go beyond the little holding section and you go all the way where the sun don't shine. No, that's suitcase, right? I ain't did none of that. So you feel me? I got to get the phone right. So I pulled my stunt. So they go, he go to screaming. So the folks end up coming to get me. They handcuffed me. They walked me all the way up front. This is one of the most uncomfortable damn walks in my life. But we get up there to the front. They take me to medical. They check me out. They ask me, Bill, were you really trying to kill yourself? I'm like, yeah. They was like, why was you trying to kill yourself, Bill? I'm like, because I'm sick of this. I'm just saying anything to get me to the area that I know this dude is in. So they're like, well, you're going to have to go on strip search. So I'm like, all right, I don't give a damn. So they take me up to the area. They, they take me in my room. The deputy warden is right there with me. This is a guy. You got the unit manager, which is a girl, and you got a lieutenant, which is another girl. Bro, if I was damn thinking, damn, I don't know why I wasn't thinking. So when I went up there, I did like this, getting ready to take my shirt off. So the unit manager told, I mean, the, the warden told the unit manager and the lieutenant to back up a little bit. Because they females, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to strip. So when I went to pull my shirt off and they backed up around the corner, he was like, matter of fact, hold on, let me go get a gown. Because they give you a paper gown, right? So he walks off around the corner. So the other two girls come back this way, but they talking amongst themselves. I go to walk in laps in the room. You know, it's a, it's a bed on the floor like this high off the ground, literally welded to the floor, all metal, freezing cold in the room. I go to pacing around like, hell yeah, I just got that ad. But I just got in here with my phone. But I'm thinking, bro, you need to uncheat that phone 
and slide it up under the bed or something real quick. But these two females is right here looking at me. But they talking, they kind of, they ain't just staring at me. I ain't gonna lie, but they kind of looking at me and looking off, looking at me and looking off. But see, I just ain't want to go to doing too much. And then, because the one thing about it, that lieutenant might have been a little slow. But that damn unit manager, ooh, ooh. But her ass was on point, especially about me. I used to catch her looking at me sometimes. I'm talking about she'd be talking to somebody, having a full conversation. And I'd be walking up this way and she'd be like, yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. And yeah, 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 what's real? I'm talking about she looking from my feet all the way up, looking at every one of my pockets. I remember one time I had a brown napkin, swear, I swear, it was about four or five napkins. And it was like this in my pocket. You know, because I used to be working, so I might just pull it out, wipe my mouth off or something. I, used, I had the brown napkins. I'm walking up, she talking to somebody, man. She came walking across the whole, all the way by the kitchen. Tell me, uh-uh, what, what that is in your pocket? Empty your pocket out, Bill. Empty your pocket out. So she just used to be on point. So that's the reason I didn't want to do nothing. So I went over to the toilet. Like, I was, you know what I'm saying, trying to pee. And I went to loosen my pants up just to try to see if I could try to put, grab the phone and kind of bring it around to the front, drop it down my leg, and then just kick it on the side of the toilet. But while I'm sitting there from the pee, I just did like that. She's talking to the other lady, staring straight at me. She was like, yeah, girl, and that's crazy. The other lady over here, she's not even looking at the lady. I'm in front of her. She's like, yeah, girl, that's crazy. Them inmates be thinking, hey, whatever she was saying, just stand them. So I was like, damn, I can't take a picture. She's like, boy, ain't nobody watching your ass. I'm just trying to make sure you ain't doing nothing to sleep. I said, if you're trying to see something, just say that. To my boy, you ain't got enough to see. You ain't got nothing to see. I'm like, whatever. So I couldn't get it off of me, bro. So I said, the only thing I can do is when they tell you to squat, I just got to do it the front way. And then long as the phone don't fall, I should be good. So the dude came back with the gown. He tell the lady, step back on that side. He like, take off your shirt. Took the shirt off, gave it to him. He squeezed through it, felt through it. He threw it on the ground. He said, pants. Took off my pants, passed it to him. He squeezed through it, threw it on the ground. He said, socks. I took off my socks. He said, boxers. Took off my boxers, handed it to him. He said, lift your arms up. I did like that. He said, stick your tongue out. I stuck my tongue out. He said, open your mouth. I opened my mouth. He said, put your finger around your gums. That means they want you to stick your finger in your mouth and just do like this around the inside and the outside of your gums. Just in case you holding something in your mouth, when you do that, it'll, it'll fall out. He said, lift your sack up. So this got to be one of the most uncomfortable parts of the process. So I do it. I lift my sack up. He said, squat. So I'm looking at him and I squatted and came back up. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, Bill. Don't play with me. You know you got to turn around and squat. I said, man, what you, what you mean? What you got going on? He said, man, you know you supposed to turn around and squat. I said, bro, I just squatted, bro. I did it again. I said, come on, bro. So he said, nope, you need to turn around and squat. I said, bro, I'm butt naked, G. Close the door, get your ass on. I just squatted twice. What, what, what the type of funny business you got going on? So he pulled off his pepper spray. He said, man, turn around and squat. Stop playing with me. So I turned around real quick, squatted and turned back around. So he was like, I'm like, what? He was like, man, you don't give me that phone and stop playing? He seen the phone. I said, damn. So I just grabbed it, boom, slammed it, hurry up, picked it up again. Boom, I did it about three times, slammed the phone out. He was like, I don't care. So he started calling the unit manager, calling her name real loud. So she came over there. And bro, everybody thought they had all the damn jokes. So she was like, what? What? He said, bring me, bring me a trash bag. Hurry up, bring me a pair of gloves and a trash bag. So she said, what the hell happened? So she run over there. She looked. She said, what the hell happened? So like two, three females behind her. So, you know, I cover up because the strip sale room is very cold. I told y'all that. It's freezing cold in here. And then I'm arguing with a grown man. So, you know, I'm not at my fullest capability right now. So I didn't want to, you feel me? So I covered up in private area like this. So she looking around the room. She looked at me. She said, what happened? What happened? So he said, he had a damn phone. So the, the other lady ran to go get the gloves. The unit manager said, go get him some gloves in a garbage bag. So the unit manager looked up at me and started smiling. Then she looked back at the war. She said, where he had the phone at? He said he had it between his ass cheeks. The lady bust out laughing. Ah! Bill had the phone in his ass! I'm talking about they thought it was so funny. It wasn't funny to me at all. I'm talking about at all, period. So... 
he ended up getting the phone out of there. I made sure I broke it up real good. And, um, you know, they left. Closed the door. So I'm in there just walking around, doing some laps, thinking like, damn, I just lost my phone. But I was so mad. Them phones was going for $2,500 a piece at that time. So um, one of the dudes come up to the glass. This is a dude I know I'm cool with. So he looking at me. He was like, so I said, what? He was like, so I walk over there to the glass. I'm like, what's up? He was like, bro, I know damn well. You ain't just have a phone in your head, boy. How the hell you fit that in there? Like he had everybody that was up there on that little float bust out laughing, and start screaming laughing. I'm like, bro, I ain't have it up there. I cheated. I didn't suitcase it. That's totally different. So he was like, nah, she said. I'm like, I don't give a damn what she said. He was like, what the hell are you doing? Like you trying to kill yourself anyway. So I told him what was going on. I'm like, nah, I was trying to get up here because I was trying to holler at dude so I can get a charger for the damn phone and end up losing the phone. He was like, damn, dude just got fired yesterday. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, hey, yeah, that's why they got me up here. He don't even work up here no more. So I'm like, damn, man, I just did all that for nothing. And uh, so they kept me in there for like four days. Now, this is what I want y'all to keep in mind about that strip sale, bro. It is freezing cold. It's air, hard air blowing, cold air. You got a metal slab on the floor and you get a... Uh, uh, a paper gown, like literally like a paper towel. The gown is made. This is thicker than what the gown material. No, this might be the same what the gown material is made out of. So it's like this is going around my body. So if I even stretch, it's going to start ripping. You know what I'm saying? It's terrible, bro. So, man, they bring me out. They bring me into the um, they bring me into the into the the medical area when they bring me out, all uh, kind of people out there, but inmates, staff members, all kind of people. So you got to go through ID because sometimes they want to take your picture. Then they got to go get your property out the little property room. All kind of females in here, new females that just started working, young females. The unit manager come in through the other door, so she see me. So the, the ID lady that works in ID, she say, hey, you heard what, Bill, you heard what your boy Bill did, didn't he? So she like, well, no, nah, what he did? But I know she lying because she heard about it. She said, no, nah, what he did? So he, she was like, yeah, Mr. The Warden told him to squat. And then he he tried to do a little squat. And then the Warden said, no, nah, squat the right way. Turn around and squat. And then she was down line. She ain't even had her facts straight. She going to say, and then he tried to do a little squat, but he went in a little deeper this time. And guess what came falling out his ass? Everybody looked in and was like, what? Came falling out of what? And then the lady said, what, girl? And she said, a phone. And guess what? That damn phone stank too. So I know he wasn't just cheeking it. I know he was suitcasing it for real. And then the lady that was in the ID, she laughing so hard she can't even get her words out. She's sitting there. Then she's going to say, girl, girl. What you said? How, how he was, girl? And then the lady was like, girl, he was like, and then the phone just came falling out his head. And everybody was looking at me laughing. But that was so embarrassing, bro. And I'm like, man, that ain't even how it happened with your line at. But I wasn't even challenging what she was saying. I ain't even gonna lie. I started damn laughing. Once everybody else was laughing and I got over there like embarrassment. I'm like, I, you're not even telling the story right. So it is what it is. But then I started laughing. It was funny to me then. I'm like, all right, whatever. Man, I went back. They walking me. The hole is all the way across the prison, all the way across the field from medical. Man, I'm walking people that I know walking past me talking about, ain't no way, C. Bill. My homeboy Ski. <laughs> My homeboy Ski, he come walking past me. He walking up while they got me a handcuff. He going to say, ain't no way, C. Bill. I'm like, ain't no way what? He like, well, they say you had a phone in your ass. <laughs> I'm like, man, shut up. Everybody had all kinds of jokes while I'm walking across the yard. It's you just got people on the yard who are out there playing basketball, soccer stuff. When they see me, they talking about, no, ain't no way. You know, all that type of stuff. But I'm like, man, y'all got me fucked up. So we get to the uh, hole. And then soon I walk in, same thing. People go to scream and laughing, beating on the door. Talking about CBL. Ain't no way, CBL. 
you know, word spread quick. All it takes is one of them to say something. Then the officer say something to her dorm. Then the inmate go back to his dorm like, well, you know that boy CB got caught with a phone. Say he had it in his ass. All kind of stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fees? What the fees? What the fees?